While out on a walk, you and a stranger happen to encounter the Alexander Hamilton Auction House. And boy, do they have an opportunity available to you. Today, they will be auctioning off a first edition copy of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. And you and the stranger are the only ones around who are going to be able to bid on it. This excites both of you because you've always wanted a copy. And why wouldn't you? But the Alexander Hamilton Auction House has specific rules on how they will allocate the book. Bidders in this auction secretly submit one bid, and that's all that happens. Those bids must be in $10 increments. This is the Alexander Hamilton Auction House, after all. And those bids cannot be zero. The auction house will see all the bids, figure out who has submitted the highest bid, award the book to that person, and charge them an amount equal to that bid. In the event of a tie, the auction house will randomly choose with a 50-50 probability distribution on who wins and who pays that cost. This is known as a first price auction because the winner of the prize is the person who bid the most and they pay that first highest price. The stranger believes that the personal value of the book to him is $24. But you, being a more enlightened individual, find it to be worth $28. These valuations are commonly known. Here's the puzzle. Given these rules and how your opponent feels about the situation, what is your optimal bid? As a hint, you need to think about Nash Equilibrium, which is a topic I cover in Chapter 1 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the solution? The first step is to think about what both of you definitely should not do. The stranger can reason that he should not bid more than $20. That's because he values the book at $24. And the next incremental bid that the auction house allows after $20 is $30. No good can come from bidding $30, and in fact, if the stranger were to somehow have the highest bid, he would end up with a negative payoff overall. Going to 40 or 50 or even more can only bring about a worse disaster, again, with no actual benefits. Although you have a higher valuation for the book, you should draw that same conclusion. $28 is still less than $30, and as a result, bidding any more than $20 can only bring about a negative payoff and can never deliver to you a positive payoff. Given that, we can narrow down the set of plausible strategies for each of you to just two. Bid $10 and bid $20. Here, I will represent your strategies on the rows and the stranger's strategies on the columns. Two of these outcomes are easy to fill in. If you bid $20 and your opponent bids $10, you have the highest bid. And this being a first price auction, you will win the book and pay $20 to receive it. Because you value the book at $28, after subtracting out the $20 to buy the book, your net gain here is $8. Similarly, if you were to bid 10 and your opponent were to bid 20, now your opponent is certain to win. They will receive the book at a cost of $20, and because they value the book at 24, their net gain is $4. In both of these cases, the loser's payoff is zero because they win nothing and they pay nothing. 
the other two outcomes are a little more complicated because they both result in a tie. Under those circumstances, the auction house awards the book to each of you with 50% probability. When you do win after having bid $10 in this tie, things are very good for you. You receive a $28 book for only $10. Thus, conditional on having won the tiebreaker, you get $18 in profit. But because you only win the tiebreaking coin flip 50% of the time, your net profit here in expectation is only $9. It's the same thing for the stranger, except they only value the book at $24. So when they win it at a price of $10, their net profit is $14. Divide that by two to reflect the fact that they have to win the tiebreaker and their payoff in expectation for the $10, $10 bid outcome is just $7. The remaining outcome is similar, albeit less attractive for both of you. When both of the bids are $20, you will win the good 50% of the time. But you have now a $28 book for $20 in price. And so your net profit here is only $8. Factoring in how there's only a 50% chance that you will win the tiebreaker, your expected payoff for a $20, $20 bid is just $4. Meanwhile, it's even smaller for your opponent. This is a $24 book for them for $20, which is a net profit of $4. But because that will only be won half of the time due to the tiebreaker, your opponent's expected payoff for this outcome is just $2. With all that set up out of the way, what should you bid? You might initially think that the answer is obvious namely that you should bid $10. And indeed, both of you bidding $10 is an equilibrium. If you expect your opponent to bid $10, then it is in your best interest to also bid $10. You get $9 in profit if you do that, whereas if you were to bid $20, although you would guarantee yourself the victory under those circumstances, you'll also be paying a substantially higher price. So much higher, in fact, that your net profit is worse than if you just bid $10 and accept the fact that you will lose 50% of the time. Your opponent can work through a similar thought process. If they expect you to bid $10, they should also bid $10. That's because the $7 that they expect to win under those circumstances is better than bidding $20 guaranteeing the victory, but only getting $4 in net profit. Notice how this outcome is self-reinforcing. If you expect the stranger to bid $10, then you want to bid $10. And if the stranger expects you to bid $10, then they want to bid $10, which reinforces your decision to bid $10, which reinforces their decision to bid $10, and so forth. But that's not the only reasonable and sustainable outcome. Imagine that you expected your opponent to bid $20. What should you do? Well, you should also bid $20. That's because you will get $4 in expectation if you do so, whereas if you were to bid $10, you would certainly lose and receive no gain at all. Like before, your opponent can think through the same sort of incentives. If they expect you to bid $20, it's in their best interest to bid $20 as well. That's because they will get $2 in expectation if they do so, whereas if they bid $10 instead, they are certain to lose and they make no money whatsoever. This is also self-reinforcing. You bidding $20 makes your opponent want to bid $20, which makes you want to bid $20, which makes them want to bid $20, and so forth. This outcome is worse for both of you than both of you bidding $10,
But that does not change the fact that both of you bidding 20 is self-reinforcing. And thus, it's a reasonable expectation. In turn, the correct answer to the puzzle is that it depends. If you're expecting your opponent to bid 10, you should also bid 10. But if you're expecting your opponent to bid 20, you should also bid 20. This set of payoffs is known as a stag hunt. It's a topic that's well studied in game theory. And indeed, a popular avenue of research is to try to understand why actors would end up in inefficient outcomes, like both of you bidding $20, when there are more efficient outcomes, like both of you bidding $10, that are also sustainable. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.